Hello and welcome to Southwestern Moscow for the 8th round of 25 in this year's TM Master Cup Series Tour, the Round of Russia, a staple of the calendar ever since it joined here in 2007. It's been held every year since, except for 2015 and 2017, when foolish American politicians prevented this race from happening because they haven't realized the Cold War has been over for quite some time. The Nukovo International Airport circuit is very long and it is very rough on machinery because these are runways we're talking about. Um, TM Master Cup Series car is not exactly handling the kind of bumps you see here very well, but it's also an incredibly wide track as well, so which means you should you should be able to see passing anywhere. And there are multiple lines on this track just because of the bumps and how wide it is. And now let's run through the starting grid. On the pole in car number eight is Saul Fischel, the championship leader, and on the outside of the front row is Liv Eklund. These two do not like each other, and we could see fireworks in the opening lap. Local hero, you have Jenny Kuznetsov and Ingrid Hadland in row number two. Both got huge ovations and driver introductions. Devereaux and Olenek in row number three. The Richter cars in row four with Kekkonen just a smidge ahead of Castaneda. Davenport continues an impressive start to the season and David Krikorian is outside. Driver. Kurt Pliskin and Tony Durbin in row number six. Durbin looking much better on the road courses this year in that car number 12. Row 7, Apo and Selmy in with the promoter's option after his Cariola performance and Zelda Ashby. Brandon LaRoe and Josh Marshall's much improved in row 8. Ryan Matthews and Timothy Ruiz is beginning to show some form in car number 33 in the Hastert machine. As we see the field going by in the background, row 10, John Dilks and Alessandro Rossini. Row 11, Lucas Grabert of Germany and BJ Pushana of the Russo Auto Sport car. Chuck Johnson out of South Carolina and Greg Woodard out of Illinois in row number 12. Both of them looking much faster than they were in practice. Tom Moore in car number four is a bit disappointed to qualify only 25th, and Gaspar D'Souza flanking him. Daniel Lechleiter in car number 10 looking very strong in qualifying trim lately, and Craig Janser in car number 81 in the Scarabs machine. Scott Bates in uh, row 15. Fernando Costa and Boris Talbanov, the first Moldovan driver to ever start a Master Cup Series race. Zach Webster and Packer Carroll was very quick in practice. Surprised he only qualified 34th. Carter Fitzgerald and Ian Cooper make up row number 18. Uh, row 19, Richard Scott in car number 70 and Hunt in car 42. Row 20, two independent trophy cars, Trek Tauger and Catherine Williams. And row number 21, Truman Ellison in one of the, in the second Tutino and Ike Durbin in car 711. The two Toyatis of uh, Vitaly Karpenko and Mikhail Antonov were both very slow in qualifying. Cameron Taylor and Luciano Savarell did not set a qualifying time at all. Uh, both for different reasons. Uh, Luciano Savarel has had mechanical problems all weekend long in car number five. And here's someone else that's having a problem. That's Fitzgerald, who uh, just this week was named the uh, uh, second driver over at Matthews. Uh, she will um, assume that role when they get back to the when the tour gets back to the United States. Her race, unfortunately, isn't even going to start. So that's one car out already. Well, here we go. And here we go. The field of now 45 has taken the green. Fischl gets a good run off the line. No standing starts here per the wishes of the promoter. Probably because of this very fast run into the first corner. As Eklund's way wide in car number 11. Hadeland trying to stick her nose up in between. But we're now looking at Kuznetsov as Fischl defends the line on the inside. And Kuznetsov gets a bit more momentum going around the outside here. Uh, the main trick with running on an airport track is uh, you want to avoid a lot of the bumps, a lot of the worst ones. So which means we could see some lines that uh, normally wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, because of the uh, track surface here, it's uh, not as uh, straightforward as that. As Kuznetsov takes over the lead, Fischl's wide, he jumps the curbs. Oh, Fischl ran over the, uh, under, the back side of the curb there. And there is some damage on the side of the 8 car on the opening lap. That is... That's a rare mistake we've seen from Fischl, but it just looks like there's just not a whole lot of grip out there, which, uh, newsflash, is not a whole lot of grip anywhere here, really. Uh, Kuznetsov in the 15, Hadeland in the 19, got a uh, pretty good jump off the line. Eklund is going back low. Hadeland sneaks, uh, sneaks around Kuznetsov, and the Cariolo Grand Prix winner, Ingrid Hadeland, takes over the lead. This is this could be interesting here. Hadeland in that 19 car is uh, on a very rich vein of form. This is... Um, this is uh, sort of what we uh, thought uh, would happen, would be happening with Lynx Racing uh, as far as Hadland's end of the garage is concerned. Uh, or actually, I should say Henton's, but Henton, of course, is not here. Here is an Apo Anselmi, who uh, got the promoter's option because of his stellar performance at the Cariola Grand Prix. I don't think it's that hard to figure out, but he's also got a decent uh, contingent here. There are some... Um, there are uh, quite a few uh, fins that came over here after Cariola uh, here to uh, 
not only cheer him on, but Arto Kekin as well, and Selmy. Um, having a pretty good start here, pretty good weekend so far. Now, this is where the Cariola Consolation Race is a little bit interesting. It's a it's a great event for the teams that didn't make the Cariola Grand Prix. We're looking at two of the, we're looking at two of them right here. Uh, the 12 car, of course, didn't start the race, and I almost wonder if the Consolation Race is the best thing that could have happened to Brandon Leroux because he seems to have a bit of confidence about him that he hasn't had really at all. But uh, ever since running the Consolation Race, you've seen a different Brandon Leroux. It's the one that uh, was uh, running so well in the TM Light Series was capable of uh, winning races and one of the few drivers last year that was able to uh, really give Fischl a run for his money sometimes. And there he goes by Tony Durbin in the 12, Leroux up to 14th. Oh, Leroux a bit wide onto the curb and he looks like he's gonna lose that position to Tony Durbin who's gonna get a good run on the outside and he's, he might lose another one to Dilks. And there is Ashby in the 55 hanging around. And now we go further back in the field to the uh, Ike Durbin car in 41st place. Um, he's having a bit of a rough weekend there. Ike Durbin going for it hard early. Oh, big slide there from Ike Durbin and around he goes and across the front bumper of Boris Silvanov. Uh, if you got a car that's as ill-handling as, uh, as Ike Durbin's is, I don't think maybe making a move like that on lap two was the wisest idea. But then again, sometimes these things happen. Uh, here is uh, Mikhail Antonov in the number 119 Toyati. Uh, both the Toyati cars actually came fairly close to uh, failing to qualify and uh, failing to make 110% speed in uh, qualifying or practice. Um, just want to point out that the drivers aren't the issue here. Antonov is a pretty well-respected young rally driver, and Vitaly Karpinko in the 114 has been around that team for a long time. Very well-respected among his peers. Oh, we got a problem here with the race leader. Ingrid Hadeland, an issue in the 19 car. Right rear going down, and there, she's being called into the pit lane. So that's that's not going to be uh, that's not going to be uh, helpful to Hadland at all. Uh, it's really going to set her back, especially after such a sterling performance at Cariala. Um, oh, now that's interesting. We had heard from some of the teams that fuel might be a concern, but uh, there's not too many people that are worried about it. That's going to put Kuznetsov back in the lead of the race, much to the uh, pleasure of the home crowd. As here, we're back with Brandon LaRoe doing battle with Lucas Grabert in the uh, 34 car, who's going to have a new sponsor, I do believe, uh, for the upcoming Ronda Wales. And there is Ryan Matthews in that purple car, the 06 car behind him as Grabert bounces off the curb. And LaRoe uh, forcing his way through a little bit in the KLTV America car number 25. Opening, uh, there's a bit of a gap forming though, and between him and Ashby, but uh, Oro again, looking very, looking very, very uh, racy so far. This is much better than what we've seen from that team or from him so far this year. Tony Durbin is uh, speaking of guys that have been looking better than usual on road courses. It's Tony Durbin. Um, he's uh, been leaning a lot on Kuznetsov for a lot of setup uh, uh, help. Tony Durbin's always kind of struggled on the road courses, but that appears to be changing. Um, as he makes a run at Anselmi for ninth, for uh, 11th, excuse me. Uh, the car number 58 being very wide at the moment. Tony Durbin trying to stick his nose in. There's Pliskin right behind him in the uh, car number 16, the Wild Stallions World Tour. Um, as uh, Durbin goes through, is Pliskin going to make a look? And there's, da there's David Krikorian, who kind of went backwards a bit on the start. Pliskin uh, trying to, thinking about it. No, nope. Pliskin thinks better of it. That uh, would have been a very aggressive move, now would it? <laughs> Only on lap four. Now here is here are two guys I think that are um, that really uh, two other guys are really buoyed by that Cariola Consolation race. That's really buoyed is Packer Carroll and who's driving the Ultra livery for the first time this year in the 71 car. Granted, he didn't last very long in the Consolation race, but he showed a lot of speed there, and he's been look and uh, whatever uh, he found that, uh, during that race or that one session, he's carried it here along with Daniel Legleiter in that 10 car. Now there is a Lennox on Fischl. Now I wonder if Fischl is being uh, hampered by damage from hitting the curb as hard as he did in the opening lap. Uh, Joe Lennox in the 23 car. He's kind of one of these personalities that you don't see that we don't see as much um, in racing. Really, Lennox will race RC cans for uh, Cola, as uh, Lance Andrews uh, commented in an op-ed piece recently. Uh, he's been very reliable and fast. That 23 car. Uh, and it, and wore it uh, for uh, not probably for nerves. He could probably could have won the round of San Antonio at the start of the year. And he's been very reliable and very dependable. Um, that's exactly what Hodges Walter needs. And uh, 
he's been doing very well so far in that car. Uh, just a little on the unlucky side, perhaps. Uh, hasn't won a race yet, but um, I think there's a lot of people expecting that to happen at some point. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of pressure from the team as Fischl gives him a bumper. Uh huh. Well, Olenek not moving out of the way. He's um, Olenek kind of knows how to handle uh, just about any situation, really. Hey, we got some Independence Trophy watching here. Josh Marshall is up into 21st position, well above where we normally expect the Independence Trophy cars to be running. And Marshall, in particular, is quite the road racer. The Australian uh, knows how to run on tracks that have a lot of a uh, lot of a uh, a lot of substantial elevation and knows how to deal with uh, how to set up a car for those situations because he of course he is run Bathurst before. Luciano Salvarol has score started in the last row with Cameron Taylor and he has made no pro he's made, really made no progress and uh, he's not exactly happy with some of the people around him. I would imagine that car he's talking about weaving around all over the place is the car directly behind him. Uh, Ian Cooper is uh, one of the more notorious brick walls in the series as they as a uh, you're managing to hold up Savarol here of all places a track where that's uh, the widest track on the calendar uh, that's uh, I think says something as Cameron Taylor who also started in the last row uh, has uh, just gotten his way up to 26th place Daniel Lechleiter is in 25th so I'd say Savarol has got more problems than just oh Cameron Taylor defend Cameron Taylor really having to force the issue there because Lechleiter was not going to give up. You want to talk about somebody else on the tour who has a bit of a, a bit of a reputation for being very, uh, very, uh, very aggressive when defending a position. It's Lechleiter. Although I should note that he is one of the more gentlemanly lapped cars in the series. That is something else. Uh, Fernando Costa is up to 23rd. Um, this is a massive overachievement, I think, for him so far. His Independence Trophy campaign has been nothing short of a disaster. And uh, this is a way to get uh, get some good results on the board, is to have some good runs like this. Of course, we've got a long ways to go, but the Pershing car has just not uh, not really had much pace. But uh, this is a good, uh, good change. Scott Bates making a move there. That'll be for 23rd. Cameron then cost a bit off the track, but he's keeping control of it. And uh, Cameron Taylor trying to hound him. Uh, Cameron Taylor in that seven car having a fantastic opening few laps. And uh, I, I don't think he's going to have uh, too many more problems storming his way through the field this race. Should be very fun to watch to see where that seven car winds up, especially at the rate he's going. Because I believe, yes, he does. have He has the second fastest lap of the race in car number seven and the third fastest lap. As Costa fights back, as you see, the Independence Trophy driver not willing to uh, lie down. Here's Vitaly Karpenko in the 114 car. And uh, Hadeland has pitted, I should note. The Toyati has not. The Toyatis are five seconds off the pace, apparently. Uh, yes, five seconds off the pace. And uh, they've got a power deficiency. That, that much is obvious. And um, their speeds down the straightaways are really the... Uh, are really the most testament to that as we got a battle for the lead here because Nietzsche really hasn't had any uh, cha any uh, challenge from behind and that's why I haven't really been showing anything here. Uh, Arto Kakinen of course nearly won the round of France and if it wasn't for a lot of uh, miscues could have scored a ton of points at Cariala. He was in definitely in contention for a podium there and uh, of course uh, he car broke of course in Road Atlanta so he's had a lot of issues this year but he's still showing a lot of speed. Imagine what his year could be as DK swinging in. A little unlucky to qualify 10th, which when I say that, that should be an indication as to how well his season's gone. Um, now, if it wasn't, another guy who, uh, if it wasn't for a few early season DNFs, uh, probably would be leading the championship or at least close to it because, of course, he won the round of France. And, of course, if it wasn't for getting uh, into an incident at Cariala um, and uh, the other the incidents at the two Scandinavian races, I should say, he, uh, a good chance he could be leading the championship, but uh, David Krikorian is uh, keeping his head down and trying to get around Fischl here. Fischl not exactly making his life very easy as DK runs wide out over the curb, but I noticed that it didn't look like he hurt the car as much. He didn't hit the curb nearly as hard as Fischl did. Uh, John Dilks is running up in 12th place. This is a pretty big effort for Team Timothy. They've been improving quite rapidly, uh, at least with this car. Uh, I should say that Ike Durbin's had a multitude of problems. He did, of course, put this car on the grid for the Cariola Grand Prix. I don't think anyone was really expecting uh, Dilks to uh, 
um, make the race, but uh, he did so and performed uh, adequately in the event itself. As we're now looking for, uh, looking at uh, Richard Scott in the 70 car, who is holding up Luciano Savarola, and it doesn't seem like uh, he necessarily cares who it is he's racing. Uh, Scott sliding, well, that's, the, that's not the first time he's done that, apparently. Um, as uh, Scott is doing his best to, to uh, hold Savarola up because they're racing for position. He's got no reason to let him go. It's, it's Scott way onto the grass as trying to keep the Brazilian behind him who is clearly struggling with that uh, car number five. Um, as Scott may have to give that position up eventually. I think, yes, yeah, Savarola goes through. But that took a lot longer than it should have. Daniel Lecklider in car number 10 having a sterling run, and we have uh, we understand he's coming in. Yes, here he comes. Daniel Lecklider, first car to pit in car number 10. He's uh, pits from 26, so now we're going to see how some of the pit strategy here plays out. But this has been a strong run for the Lecklider team, or the uh, Tenera Motorsports team, I should say, one half of it. Uh, as we're now looking at Ruiz in the car number 33, as I saw somebody else peeling off into the pit lane. Um, as uh, he's uh, having to deal with a challenge from behind from Scott Bates. Oh, he's got a problem. Ruiz slowing. I don't know what that is uh, with the, that's gone wrong through with Ruiz, but he's pulling off to the side. And there's another car right behind him that's slowing. And that's a fire, I think, in the back of Vijay Pushanda's car. Well, as uh, Vijay Pushanda and Ruiz both out at the same time in the same place for two different reasons. As we're now looking at Eklund, who has uh, gotten her way uh, up to third in the uh, car number 11 as she peels into the pits. Decent recovery there by the Swede, who has um, been doing uh, quite a bit of uh, sightseeing in the area, as Liv Eklund. Uh, Chris Davenport I saw coming into the pits as well. Uh, here is Richard Scott in the 70 car again. As Oh, Tauger gets into the back of him, and that wasn't called for, I don't think, as Tauger turns him around, but... That's the benefit of having a very wide track like this. Scott didn't hit anything. He's going to carry on. And um, as, uh-oh, uh problems in the pit stall as I hear it. Yep, Eklund slid right through her uh, pit stall. He's going to have to back up. That's going to cost a lot of time there, and that's a big disappointment for Liv Eklund. That's not a surprise. Um, as Kuznetsov uh, pits from the lead on lap number nine. Arto Kekkonen right behind him, shadowing his every move. So far, Devereaux is in, Castaneda's in, uh, another car in the background in, a little hard, uh, Telenic is in, that's who it is, that fifth car in the background. And now let's see where everyone is when pit stops cycle out, that's Kuznetsov leaving the pits in car number 15, Kuznetsov holds the lead. I bet he got it, actually, great work by New Liberty Racing because he gained a ton of time on Arto Kekkonen, there's Devereaux. There's Castaneda, there's Hadeland, and there is Olenek, Gregorian, John Dilks, and there is Kurt Pliskin, Tony Durbin, Ashby, Johnson, Anselmi, um, that is Rossini, LaRoe, Matthews, uh, Packer Carroll, great work in the pits by Packer Carroll's bunch over, over at Lawrence Gravity Racing. Uh, Davenport, very slow pit stop there in car number 17. Um, as we see the rest of the field going by, an emerald green car, that's Cooper. There's Hunt in the red and yellow car. Irish driver having a pretty uh, uh, pretty strong rookie season. The Lecklider Motorsports car crew, it's like uh, they slid back a bit with car number 10. And uh, there's Fischl way back. They were, they were repairing damage in car number 8. Of course, this car is off cycle, Ingrid Hadland. She's coming back in. But uh, if fuel mileage is a question, uh, then I think Hadland's position here is going to be definitely of note. And, uh, oh, oh, bumper tag. That is Rossini getting punted off the track by Anselmi. I don't think that was, um, I don't think he's, I don't think that's going to be uh, going to go over all that well with the Volpe Racing Team, uh, who just uh, looked a little bit off this weekend as there is Anselmi going way off the track. That, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's one of the least surprises. Anselmi may have a problem here, as uh, yes, he has another problem, driving into the side of Ashby when he shouldn't. Ludicrous. Um, Ashby, you gave him the spot, as you can see, but uh, not the most brilliant piece of driving by Anselmi. It looked like he just kind of got caught up with making one mistake and then proceeded to make about three more. 
Uh, not very, not very brilliant from the uh, the young Finn, but he's hopefully got his whole career ahead of him. And uh, if that's the only mistake he makes during his career, he can call it a good day. Um, as here is Savaral in car number five, back in, uh, well, back in the field. Uh, you, there is the running order on the left, Packer Carroll, you may have noticed, up to 17th. So uh, he is doing very, very well so far. Davenport didn't slide back as far as I thought he did, it looks like. Um, uh, you see Savaral back in 28th. Uh, he is uh, hounding, uh, that is Richard Scott in car number 70, uh, his old friend from earlier. Uh, Savaral not... Uh, Definitely not going to be, uh, probably going to be having a uh, conversation with Scott after the race, although, oh, maybe not. Well, there goes Savarol, there goes the engine on the five, or something anyway, so <laughs> that's going to take him out, definitely. Uh, good thing it's, he, good thing it failed over here, because it's easy to pull the car off and into the garage, and there's a marshal post as Savarol turns in over there. Here's Vitaly Karpenko, the stalwart over at Toyati. Uh, doing the best he can with what he's got here as uh, the uh, Russian veteran who's been running in GTs for most of his oh off he goes that's surprisingly the first time he's been off track in this car been about four seconds off the pace um, very ridiculously slow yes but he is staying with it well under what uh, any minimum speed rules would be as um, here is Boris Tilbanov with the Bruce Autosport car, first Moldovan driver ever in the TM Master Cup Series. Bruce Autosport, of course, has an alliance with an American outfit that uh, would that use the same name or close to it, Bruce Autosport America, similar to how Cats of Engineering operated for uh, most of its existence, as uh, most of its existence, recent existence, I should say. Uh, as Tilbanov trying to get a, get around Scott, and that is Cooper in that bright green car right there. Um, Tobanov trying to uh, get a career off the ground here in the uh, in the Master Cup Series. Having a good run so far. There is as the two car begins to fall back and he's trying to hound Richard Scott for what I do believe is 25th. Okay, so after the, here is John Dilks. He's who's running in the top 10. Uh, after the after the Cariola Grand Prix, he was not terribly impressed with uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov after the incident they had. Um, he had quite a lot of things to say in the press about it, and a lot of those got reprinted here in Russia, and he got booed probably louder than anyone else as a result. Uh, John Dilks, uh, not happy with how Kuznetsov handled it. Uh, Kuznetsov, on being who he is, um, uh, was uh, very polite about it and just <laughs> and uh, tried to tell uh, Dilks to not get as upset about it because because uh, of course, said, uh, claimed he didn't mean it, which I think is very easy to believe. However, I don't think John Dilks did. However, he's having a good run here in Kuznetsov's backyard. As Karpinko in the 114 car, yeah, something's definitely wrong with that car. He is doing the best he can there, and yeah, that's probably going to be um, that's probably going to be mercy for uh, Karpinko after that, because I don't think that car was. Uh, a comfortable ride around here around this track to say the least as this is one of the more fun battles we have on track right now ryan matthews and zelda ashby for 10th uh two drivers that we may not have been uh, look have uh shone that much of a spotlight on continuing to put on a pretty good show ashby doing what she's uh done for most of her career really do uh drive very well but uh even though she may not be getting the most attention uh, now here is a guy who needs a good run and i think we who needs a spotlight is uh, zach webster He's been, uh, to put it lightly, he's been awful so far in the uh, first seven races of the year. He's, uh, he has won a, a consolation race to Cater, but outside that, it's been pretty bleak for Webster this year. He's been outpaced by Craig Yonser, who has been out of a Master Cup car uh, for a very long time. But this is a good run from Webster, and this is about what we were expecting of him. And uh, here's another guy who I need to mention again is having a very good drive is Packer Carroll who is setting up Rossini who is a lap was a lap down. I noticed that Packer Carroll is uh, staying in the draft of some of the uh, cars in front of him for a pretty long time down the straightaway. In fact, I see there, there's quite a few people that appear to be doing that. And uh, if we got a fuel mileage race on our hands of some kind. That could be a big factor as uh, here is Cameron Taylor directly in front of him. Who I, who I should remind you started in the last row and is running inside the points. This is how championships are won. Even though Taylor doesn't have a win to his name yet, and his teammate Saul Fischl does, he goes by Brandon LaRoe, he is capable of making strong recovery drives after mishaps early on as Scott Bates and 
Uh, Chuck Johnson are doing battle for the 11th. Bates looks left, swings back to the outside. Is he going to make this move? Scott Bates swings it wide, and he clears Chuck Johnson. I don't think saw that move coming at all. Scott Bates, a candidate for over overtake of the year, perhaps. I uh, caught Chuck Johnson sleeping with a fake out over there in uh, turn 13, as we have uh, Cameron Taylor pitting. Is that a bit early, perhaps? Uh, for Taylor, we'll see as Davenport pits in the 17. That is the Fernando Costa car right behind him in the 154, the kind of lavender colored car. Here is Greg Woodard in car number 41, the Power Sing Incorporated driver having a luckless season. One of a couple of drivers, I think, that could claim that as Yonser try, uh, moves over him a little bit, but Woodard um, trying to fight his way through the field and into the points in the 41 car. Oh, that's not, uh, there was almost not enough room there. The racing line narrows out quite a bit after turn two. Uh, as now we're clearing the lap car of Alessandro Rossini, who's uh, staying out of everyone's way for the most part. But again, if you see how wide this track is, I'm kind of wondering how no one's able to find a room, uh, find room past him. You can fit semi trucks across this track sideways and still have enough room to race around them. I don't know why Rossini is so much of an obstacle. He's not exactly hogging the racing line that much. He's, uh, as we've looked at Truman Ellison, who's fought his way up to 19th. Uh, Ellison having a strong run after a pretty quiet uh, uh, beginning part of the season. Uh, here is Kuznetsov lapping Antonov, and uh, Kuznetsov going on by his countryman, who is. Uh, I think trying to hang in there for some photo ops, perhaps, uh, as uh, uh, Kuznetsov goes goes on by. Antonov having a rough day, to say the least, but he's still in the race as uh, Kuznetsov continues to uh, power away. Here is Arto Kakin in car number one, holding off Adrian Devereaux in the 74. Devereaux for, uh, trying to force the issue here. Nope, not doesn't have enough momentum to make that, room, that, that move work. As Kekkonen brings the one car in, Devereaux pits the 74. Kuznetsov is still on track in the uh, 15 car. Kostinetta's in, Lennox in. Um, there's another car coming in the back, David Krikorian in the background. A lot of blue cars in the series. Um, and many wonder, I get some of them confused sometimes. As Kurt Pliskin pits the Wild Stallions uh, World Tour 16 car. And here is the AQ Dato 6 of Ryan Matthews. Matthews having a good day. Uh, running inside the top 10. Packer Carroll continuing to impress up here in 14th. Uh, that is a, a battle for position. Of course, uh, should be a little bit of a caveat that some cars have pitted and he hasn't. Uh, but I believe he is going to be coming in soon as he gets around the 87. And are they going to be pitting? Yes, he is. Packer Carroll pits. That's a, that was a timely pass that he made. As we're now looking at uh, Craig Yonser. There's Ellison in. Uh, Pit Road, a very active place right now. Woodard is in as well. Kuznetsov has staying out a quite a while. And uh, that gap that he built early on I f um, is coming back to help him, I think. Kuznetsov has been in the series since 2011. Um, hasn't won a race yet, but this is, the, this is easily the best chance he's had so far in his uh, career. Been around for a uh, very, been a very long time. We've been wondering, could this be the day? Uh, for quite some time, and uh, we'll see. He's got a, he's, uh, that gap doesn't look like as big as I thought it would be. Uh, between Arto Kekin and Adrian Devereaux have kind of closed it in a little bit. Uh, some strong outlaps. John Dilks is still up there in, like, in, uh, I believe about seventh place. Um, and, uh, uh, as you see the couple other cars going through as we go down through the field, as, uh, some interesting commentary there. Uh, there is Johnson, who is still stuck behind Bates. So that pass that Bates made, uh, that's going to be it. There's Packer Carroll building a gap now on the 87 car. There is the Pershing 154. Costa having a good run. Ellison there. There is uh, Davenport, who's having, uh, trying to fight through the field still. Tom Moore is uh, falling well back through the field. They've had a multitude of problems with this car today. Uh, that's why we haven't seen much of him in the winter in Los Angeles. Has had a uh, oh that's not nice. Lucas Grabber gives him a gives him a little bit of a punt. Um, Moore gets gets it back together. The win in Los Angeles has had a um, having a bit of a rough time uh, the last couple of races out. But we'll uh, but uh, I think he is going to be looking forward to returning to some of the short tracks in North America where he uh, has tended to specialize. And uh, Grabber drove right into the back of him. I don't think there's. <laughs> 
I don't think anyone's really going to contest that penalty, and I think if you did, um, oh, well, I don't really know what to say, but, uh, n nonsense, but nonsense driving there from Grabber, who has, uh, been performing well, but that's not his most brilliant moment so far this year. Here is Ashby, who is, uh, uh, again, continuing to uh, perform strongly in that car number 55. Her teammates out of the race, but uh, she's still uh, uh, sailing on as if there's uh, there's as if that's not happening. She's not really taking care of the car any more than, uh, than anyone else, seemingly. Uh, continuing to force her way up through the field. She's running an eighth across the line. Uh, so Ashby continuing a strong performance today. Here's Craig Yancer, who is. Um, Uncharacteristic, uh, uncharacteristically being out outshone by uh, the 80s. Oh, that might be why. Well, or either that or it might have been after he hit that curb over there, I just noticed, coming out of the chicane. So Yonser's day might be, uh, it looks like that is definitely a terminal for uh, Craig Yonser. It's a bit disappointing for, uh, for him. As we see here, uh, Cameron Taylor, who is inside the points in 20th. Uh, chasing down, that is Ellison in the 50 car, and that is Woodard directly behind him, who wants who wants that one point here. Uh, Taylor, factory Lennar driver, Woodard, factory Lacoya driver, which even though they have the same parent company, uh, there are some questions as to how independent they really are. Um, Woodard definitely forcing his way through there. Good move from Woodard as he hunts down the uh, Truman Ellison. Now is Taylor saving fuel, perhaps? As uh, Brandon LaRoe is uh, uh, his uh, rather sterling day at the uh, performances so far this weekend are starting to become a bit unwound as he has uh, sort of dropped through the field a bit. But um, oh no, oh no, there it goes. It's over for LaRoe in the 25 car. That's that's a big disappointment because he was having a very he was having a pretty good run, but it's just slowly coming unwound, and I wonder if this is why. One of this is a problem that that team knew about, and uh, uh, it's unfortunately the end of his race. Uh, as John Dilks now uh, running uh, up inside, running in six. This is a career day for the journeyman out of New Jersey. Um, definite way to sort of show up Kuznetsov and to sort of uh, uh, stick a thumb at him. The only problem is Kuznetsov's leading the race by a pretty substantial margin. But this is still a very good performance from Dilks, who. Um, uh, I don't think too many people were expecting would be uh, would have a run in like this this early in the season. And here is Fernando Costa who is in position to score some championship points today. That's how you save an independent trophy run after such a disastrous start as he goes by Webster in the 87 who is also having a day that he desperately needs. Uh, if I'm Webster, I, I would even consider ceding the place to Davenport if he forces the issue too much. I think he is. Um, because if you're a Webster, you need a good run like this. And if you're Fernando Costa, you need a day like this. But we now we start to wonder, uh, is or maybe uh, Webster is going to fight this. Or maybe he's not even going to have the opportunity to as Davenport uh, pulls away a little bit. But uh, this, is a, this is the run that Zach Webster's needed all season. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's having a... Uh, and we see radio communication from Joe Olenek. Ital if the uh, italic text means it is coming from the pit wall, in case that uh, was not clear before. Uh, as uh, this battle for second is really beginning to heat up, but not only that, Kakinen and Devereaux are actually faster than Kuznetsov and are beginning to reel them in quite uh, substantially. We're running out of laps, but there is, a, there, there is a chance that they can catch him at the rate that they're going right now. Um, it's, going to be, it's going to be marginal, but we'll see. Depends on how much fuel Kuznetsov's saving. He may not need to, but um, uh, the pace that he's running suggests that might be the case. As uh, uh, Kekkonen and Devereaux trying to uh, run him down, uh, but uh, Devereaux trying to peek out. Uh, some some of these slingshot passes they keep doing to each other might be uh, might be helping their case, might be hurting it. There's a good argument for both. Uh, depends how much time they sort of waste with each other. As Ingrid Hadeland running in 23rd if there are any if there are any cars out there with fuel concerns i don't think the 19 is going to be one of them uh because uh remember she had that right rear go down early on which uh, you want to talk about a recovery drive uh sort of minding your own business all day and uh, uh sort of running your pit strategy backwards is uh not the worst way to do it i might say as leck lighter in the 10 is uh has a uh, avenue to go by, but Lecklider, there's a deficiency in the straightaways there as he's not able to get alongside Hadeland. 
the uh, Lynx cars at Cariola were um, uncannily fast on the straights, and that was the case here in qualifying as well. Uh, highest uh, traps and uh, highest speed traps were from cars 19 and 11 in that order. As Lecklider in the 10, is he going to? Yeah, he's not even going to try making on fuel. Lecklider's coming in. That's interesting. Interesting decision there. We'll see how that turns out. He may not have been able to, or they might have abandoned it. Here is Tony Durbin. Oh, so it looks like, aha, uh -huh. so that's a uh, little bit of insight there as to the, some of the strategies going around. Tony Durbin's team, not sure if he's going to be able to make it. Uh, the 15, uh, looks like uh, you saw there, uh, uh, the new Liberty Racing team thinks that uh, uh, Kuznetsov will make it on fuel. Gino, of course, being Kuznet being short for you, Jenny, the pet name of that, in case anyone was wondering, as Tony Durbin pits from eighth in uh, car number 12. That sees abandoning after uh, abandoning uh, making it on fuel, which might be a wise move. Tony Durbin's well down in the uh, championship standing because if he's going to make a run on the championship at all, which is doubtful, it's uh, he's going to need some big results. Uh, and just piling on points is better than getting none, um, even if it's 18th or 19th. As Ryan Matthews and Zelda Ashby continue this battle they've had all day, uh, Probably one of the best wheel-to-wheel -wheel duels we've seen. Um, probably the best wheel-to-wheel -wheel duel on this track. Uh, that's la um, uh, to be honest with you, because this has gone on for most of the race. These two have been unable to get away from each other, and this has been a very clean battle too. Two veteran drivers. Aha! As you see there, uh, Kekkonen, uh, they've given the green light to run down Kuznetsov. As we see the lead uh, that Kuznetsov has, there's the 15 going by. That lead has shrunk, has definitely shrunk in the last few laps. It may not look like it because of this camera angle and the uh, angle we, we last saw it in, but um, uh, uh, Lenik and Krikorian have also apparently dropped the hammer, so to speak, and are trying to run down, uh, trying to get a podium out of this. Uh, John Dilks in the 68 appears to be backing off and just uh, appears to be content with what he's got, which is uh, not a smart, which not a uh, not a unwise decision. It's because Nietzsche closes in on Rossini. See, look how wide this track is. I don't know how Rossini was being such an obstacle earlier. He was getting out of the way. He's being polite. That's what he normally does. He's a veteran driver. He knows better. You, sometimes when you have a lap car, uh, and and when you come across the lap car, you have to go by them. Um, it's Tony Durbin uh, having. Uh, He's still in the points, it looks like, in this car number 12. He might be about 19th, bottom around, uh, bottom uh, end of the points uh, here. So this could be still a points finish for Tony Durbin, even if he's abandoning that fuel strategy, which, again, claiming two points or four points is better than none. Could be a, that's a smart move from a veteran driver, as there's Cooper, who he uh, throws a block on, as a, a, a fair one, I might point out, as there is the 50 car of Ellison getting away from him. Hadland lur lurking there in the background. Cooper challenging Tony Durbin. Uh, I think they're going to get a good run on the 12 car as uh, a bright green uh, octane car. Very distinctive paint job to say the least. Uh, they'll be back in the Nespes livery for the round of whales, we understand. Arto Kakinen now uh, get, uh, working on some of the lap cars here. That is uh, the three of uh, Rossini. Devereaux falling back. I wonder if... Uh, Wonder if Dever has not been able to keep up with the pace Kekkonen and setting, or if he does try to keep up with it, if he'll just run out of fuel, which is possible. Uh, we're, this is going to be very close on fuel. Kekkonen in, uh, Kekkonen's closing. Kuznetsov, there's the gap. Kuznetsov is definitely slowing, and Kekkonen is starting to run him down. Coming to take the white flag this time by Kuznetsov in the 15. He's going to have Arto Kekkonen all over his back bumper. Kekkonen had to... Kekkonen sort of perfected this late charge strategy for the round of France. Didn't quite work out, but this time he's given himself more time to, uh, to try to make it work this time here in the round of Russia. Kuznetsov in front of the home crowd here. Trying to make, trying to get his first career win after being in the series for eight years. Uh, trying to hold off Arto Kekkonen, the reigning series champion in car number one. K uh, Kuznetsov and Kekkonen nose to tail. Is Kakinen going to make it on fuel? We believe he is. The team thinks he is. They've given him the green light to go attack. Kuznetsov sliding it a little bit, trying uh, trying to open up a bit of a gap between him and Kakinen. There's a couple of places that uh, Kakinen could realistically get by him. We haven't seen a whole lot of passes coming into these chicanes, but we've seen a lot of passing coming out of them as long as everyone's kept their noses clean. And it looks like they have 
Uh, Kuznetsov trying to pull a little bit on the one. Going into the second chicane. Kekkonen nails the second chicane. Kuznetsov slings it a little bit wide. Kekkonen is going to have a shot here. Coming down the end of the runway here is Kuznetsov trying to pull away. He's uh, hoping, uh, hoping against hope that uh, it seems like that he can uh, that he can outlast Kekkonen. Kekkonen peeks out. He's not not going to be able to make that pass stick. Kekkonen holding in right behind Kuznetsov. He's giving himself only one or two chances. He's running out of running out of time. Kekkonen trying to pull out, but Kuznetsov just has enough coming out of some of these uh, medium speed corners. Two corners to go. Kekkonen is he going to be able to make it move? Kuznetsov trying to hold on for his first career win. Kuznetsov hugs the white line. Swings it out wide. Kekkonen's going to have one. He's going to maybe have one shot here. And Kuznetsov in through the last corner. He, slay, he skates it wide. There's a little bit of contact. It's going to be a drag race down the front straightaway. Yep, Kekkonen did give himself the most room. Down to the line. Kuznetsov wins it in front of his home crowd. This is going to be a celebration for the ages here in Russia. And we're looking back at Cameron Taylor in the seven car. And we've got Chuck Johnson's run out of fuel. Taylor's run out of fuel. So the fuel gambles of Taylor and Johnson have failed, justifying the call from Tony Durbin's pit box to go for a splash at the end. As I speak, a celebration is beginning to erupt in the pit lane. Definitely one of the most popular first-time winners in a very long time. Uh, it's been a, it's gonna take a lot for me to remember a time where the whole pit lane appears to be celebrating someone else's first win quite like this. Kuznetsov winning in front of Arto Kekkonen, barely. Adrian Devereaux held on to third. Olenek and Krikorian fourth and fifth. Uh, John Dilks, sixth place. Uh, it's going to be a very strong run for him. He definitely needed that. Marco Castaneda had a very uh, quiet race. Wasn't really around too many other cars, but he brought it home seventh. That's what he needs. Zelda Ashby and Ryan Matthews, that's how that battle uh, ended up. And Kurt Pliskin rounds out the top ten. Scott Bates in eleventh. Packer Carroll scores a 12th place that he desperately needed, and that's going to be a huge confidence booster for uh, Carroll going forwards. He's had a bit, he's had a rough go of it so far this year, but Lawrence Gravity Racing definitely looks like they found something, and especially with some new sponsorship coming on board, I think they might be uh, looking a little bit better uh, further down the line. Greg Woodard in 13th is a result that he desperately needed, and I think he'll be happy with that. Uh, Zach Webster will be, almost definitely be happy with 14th. Cooper 15th. Davenport in 16th, Truman Allison gets some more points in 17th, Ingrid Hadeland uh, after a puncture in 18th is probably a uh, the best she could have done, but it's still an impressive run. Tony Durbin in 19th and Boris Tolbanov in car number 82 rounds out the points finishers. Good to see the promoters option cars end up getting points at the end of the day. And let's have a quick look at the Drivers' Championship. Saul Fischel leads the way on 274 points. The 19-year-old rookie showing everyone how it's done so far this year. He appears to be the real deal so far. Davenport, second in the championship. Fairly anonymous day, but Davenport got some more points, which is what he needed to make a real run at the championship. And just think, about five or six years ago, the Thoughts Chris Davenport championship push sounded like they were out of a bad fan fiction. Tom Moore is still third in the championship, but I think he's going to be one driver who wants to forget that this race ever happened. Liv Eklund might feel likewise. I would like to remind you that Liv Eklund is an emergency replacement driver for Davina Henton, and she is still listed as an interim driver. That's going to make this situation at Lynx very awkward because Henton might be ready to come back later in the year. However, at this point, I believe it's reasonable to expect that Eklund will be in that car for the remainder of the year. While it seems like everyone and their mother in the media center is inventing criticisms for Liv Eklund, I would note that the conversation has shifted away from Liv Eklund doesn't deserve the 11 car to, to what I can only describe as honestly very frivolous issues like her social media account, her eyeliner, her shoes, where she decides to go around town, how much she tweets about various individuals in the paddock or anything other than the fact that she is having a fantastic on-track season, even more so when you consider how poor her TM Lights record was. Anyways, given that Kurt Pliskin sits fifth in the championship and looks very robust this season, I think it's very easy to say that he is making a run at the championship this season with Power Sing Incorporated. That 16 car could be very, very menacing later in the year, as if he isn't already. 
Uh, Adrian Devereaux, six in the championship. Count him out at your own risk. Marco Castaneda is having a quiet start to the season, aside from winning Road Atlanta, but he is still looking very strong so far. Three rookies in the top ten in the championship, I might add. Ingrid Hadeland sits eighth for now, but if her form lately is any suggestion, then she could be a very, very serious contender for this championship already. The gap between Cameron Taylor and Ingrid Hadeland is why sometimes fuel gambles are not a good idea. Joe Lennick rounds out the top 10 in the championship with Arto Kakinen one point back. The reigning champion uh, probably needs to pick it up a little bit. Looks like he's on his way to doing so. David Krikorian, a little bit better luck. He'll be a lot higher. He'd be a lot higher than where he is. Coming off his first win, Kuznetsov sits 13th in the championship, but for him, the sky's the limit after today. Ryan Matthews is also looking very strong. And at the rate that team's progressing, they could be front runners before we know it. Sovereign and Atkins tied on 117. Sovereign holds the tiebreaker. Rossini, on Rossini sits 17th. He's had a miserable past few races. Tony Durbin, 18th. Apo and Selmy in only two races is 19th, but that's, of course, what a double point score will do for you. And Scott Bates rounds out the top 20 in the Drivers' Championship. Let's have a quick look at the Independence Trophy. Mason Yokoyama still leads the way, but Josh Marshall can easily leapfrog him if he has a strong run in the next race. Catherine Williams and Fernando Costa are going to need a little bit of extra help or a very strong run in order to uh, come close to sniffing uh, Mason Yokoyama's total. However, uh, if they qualify for a special event or get a promoter's option, that could definitely help their case. Trek Talger probably would be closer to Fernando Costa or perhaps even ahead of him had he not caused an incident today. Keegan Mallory's points all come from a promoter's option entry, and Nick Azure is listed even though he only started the Cariola Grand Prix Consolation Race, which does not count for Independence Trophy points. Probably much to his chagrin because he came sixth in that race. Well, that'll do it for today here in Russia. The next time the series will be in action will be the Round of Wales at the Launch Energy Motor Park at St. David's. You may have noticed that this is not the only cut to this race. There's another one with my good friend Syzygy on commentary. Check it out over here. Or better yet, check out his channel. He's got a bunch of neat stuff on it and give him a subscribe. He makes some neat stuff. You should check it out.